Hi, this is Pad Love with Pat's Two Cents. I'm feeling myself again, and I want to share John chapter 3. Sometimes we need to hear the word and have it explained. Many people don't even know what it means to be saved. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his, world, his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten of this, the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. I got to repeat that. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. Mm -hmm. Now, for those of you, Pat's two cents, for those of you who are wondering, what the heck was that all about? Listen. Nicodemus was a man of the cloth. Mm -hmm. And he, like many of you, was a little ashamed to let everybody see him. 
So rather than deal with peer pressure, he tiptoed to Jesus when nobody was looking. Mm -hmm. He wanted what he had, but he didn't want the flack that comes with it. Now, Jesus just broke through all his nonsense and basically said, Come on, brother, you need to give your heart to the Lord. You need to get saved. You need a new start, a new beginning. Only this beginning will not be what you've already known. Flesh. In flesh. No, this new beginning is in the spirit. Something you don't see like the wind. You understand what I'm saying now? I'm interpreting real loosely so you get the gist of what the word is saying. So he repeats to him, new start, buddy, in me, right? Now, new slant, new slate, clean slate, whole nine yards. But you got to come through me to get to God. That's Jesus talking. Excuse me. So what happens after that is he explains how he's born of the water and of the spirit in order to enter the kingdom of God. And he explains the flesh being a flesh and the spirit, the spirit. And he talks about the wind and how you can't see it. Well, see, a spiritual birth is not seen. Spiritual birth is believed. Now, this is what I want to say to you. He's saying to him, you see earthly things. You believe in earthly things. You can see what's going on and you believe it. But then there are some things you don't believe. You just refuse to believe it. Earthly things now, in the natural. Now, if you can't believe some of that, how are you going to believe what I'm telling you? And that has to do with the spirit realm. How are you going to do that? How are you going to believe it? Now, the Son of Man is just like the serpent. Check it out. God revealed this to me years ago when I was a brand new Christian. And I didn't even know this scripture was in the Bible when God revealed it to me. Moses lifting up the serpent to stop the Israelites from being killed by the fiery serpents, which was the judgment of God. The only out for them was God told Moses, create a brass serpent, put it on a pole, stick it up high on a hill, and tell everybody if you want to live and not die from the venom of those snakes that I sent. You must look to the brass serpent. Now, my mind says, well, now that doesn't make any sense either. The Holy Spirit explains and reveals to me in a split second. The brass serpent bit nobody. The brass serpent had done no harm to anyone. The brass serpent looked just like the thing that was killing them, the venomous snakes. However, they had to look at the similitude of sin that had committed no sin, that had hurt nobody, that had killed nobody in order to be healed from the snakes that were hurting and killing people. We, in like manner, have to look up to Jesus who was lifted up on a tree who died for our sins. When he died, if we, ex if we look to him, our sins 
are removed from us and we get a brand new clean slate. So we are Jesus who came in the form of sinful flesh had committed no sin that the flesh commits. And the flesh that was killing us, we could only be delivered from it by looking to Jesus, the sinless flesh, on the cross, on that tree, up on a hill, who died for all of our sins. So when the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, he gave him as a sacrifice. There was no more need for any more sacrifice because Jesus was perfect. He was holiness. He was righteousness. He was love personified. No sin, no darkness, no fleshly ways in him. And us, as we're being destroyed by the works of the flesh, by the yearnings and the lust of the flesh, mm -hmm, and the contaminants of the flesh, looking to him delivers us. So now in a lot of religions, check it out. You have to die. You have to uh, sacrifice and sacrifice and, and you have to earn and work hard for you know to get up to different levels and, and I mean you have to just go through all kind of changes but with God with Jesus Christ he died for us so instead of us having to do all the sacrificing Instead of us having to jump through fiery hoops and earn our salvation, our salvation was earned and paid for by Jesus Christ, not by us. And all we had to do was look, acknowledge, receive, and then as this is what I love about God's love. His love is so rich that he also sent his Holy Spirit. When Jesus rose from the dead, he sent his Holy Spirit. The spirit that dwelled in Jesus is dwelling in us. Why? Why do we need the Holy Spirit? New nature. When you it's like this. If you turn on a faucet and you have nothing but cold water and you need warm water because it's cold outside and you have to take a shower and you don't want to freeze to death. The only way you're going to turn the hot water on is if you turn the faucet that flows with hot water. So turning that water on gives us what we need but we can't get warm unless we turn on the warm faucet we cannot want to change from cold to warm without having been given a new nature and the new nature comes from the holy spirit nobody has to tell you to lie now, this is not for you born-again Christians that have been saved for years. This is strictly for people who don't understand what is the big deal about salvation. Nobody has, you can be two years old and you know how to take something that doesn't belong to you. It's in your nature. It's in your flesh. The contaminants of the flesh, the characteristics of sinful flesh. You know how to tell a lie. Did you eat that cookie? No. Cookie crumbs all over your mouth. No. Ball face lie. Nobody took that two year old to a seminary on how to tell lies. It's in our nature. 
to do wrong. It's in there. That's why we like mischief so much. But when the Holy Spirit comes, that could only come once Jesus rose from the grave. He sent his spirit to us to stack the debt in our favor. See, this is how fair God is. He will not demand anything from you that he won't empower you to do. If God tells you to forgive, he'll give you the ability. Start asking. It'll shock you how easy God makes it. Start asking him to help you do what you can't do normally. You'll be surprised. Life doesn't have to be so hard. <laughs> okay. So I ask you. I... I invite you to enter in to a much new level, a much higher level, a higher quality of supernatural love. The love that kept Jesus up there on that tree when he could have called 10,000 of his angels to rescue him. He endured the pain. He endured the shame for you and for me. Give him a try. All I ask you is give him a try. How many of you know of a God that will die for you? It's the only one. He's the ultimate sacrifice. He paid for our sins. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin that left a crimson stain. But he, he washed it white as snow. Where else can you get a new lease on life? Where else can you be guilty as sin? And be totally pardoned. Hmm? And given a whole new start. As if you had never sinned. Only the love of God can do that. I beseech you to go to God. I'm going to say a prayer. Say this prayer with me. Because see, some of you are walking through life like a walking wounded, like the walking dead. You're just existing. You're empty. There's nothing happening in here that makes life worth living but God. And you're bypassing him because everything else is sparkling around you. And everything else titillates the flesh. And that sounds more exciting. But the difference is, God doesn't have negative side effects. But sin does. Sin has a penalty. Sin has consequences. Like the street term says, don't write a check you're behind. Can't cover. When you play with sin, you're writing a check you're behind. Cannot cover. But when you go to God, you write that check, God says, paid in full. Don't worry about it. I got this. I got the bill. And you find out God ain't using you. He's not playing you. He's not luring you to say, psych. It's a whole new level of love. whole new level of life. Then when you get in the body of Christ, oh my goodness. When you get with God's people, none of us are perfect. But I tell you what, there's way more beauty in the fellowship of the, of the believer than there is in the fellowship with this world. Everybody's got a ticket. Everybody's got a price. Everybody's got an agenda. But when you get with true blue believers, it's a whole new ball game. 
I'm going to say the prayer and I want you to agree with me. Father, I ask you to forgive me for sins, all sins. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Now, I may not understand all this. And I, my faith may not be up to the level that a lot of other peoples might be at. But I am taking the first step. And I ask you to reveal yourself to me. To change my heart. Change my mind. Give me that new nature that crazy lady was talking about. Give me the power over my own will. In the name of Jesus. When you pray, you pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. Okay? So, I will pray over you. Father, I ask you to bless these people. Forgive them. They accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, with power and all the gifts he's got to give and all the fruits of love and peace and joy and mercy, all the, all the fruits. And I ask you, Lord, to bless these people to know you, to know you in your love. Pour your love out all them, on them. Fill them. Strengthen them. And above all, after you've done all that, Lord, heal their hearts, minds, bodies, souls, spirits. And remove the pains and the stains and the shame of the past. Once and for all. I know some of that is a process. But we ask you, Lord, to do it right here, right now. At least begin it. In the name of Jesus, I pray and I thank you. And I say to all of you who have agreed with me in prayer and have accepted Jesus into your heart, welcome to the family. God bless you.